Hello, welcome to the Thursday, May 26, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Today's diary comes from Rob with a little nmap trick. Now, in nmap, as a target, you may specify a host name, but if you do so, only the first IP address returned is actually being scanned. The other IP addresses are ignored. And that's, of course, a problem if you're using, for example, multiple IP addresses for load balancing, and uh, you would like to check all of your IP addresses, in particular, if you're looking for, for example, TLS certificates and such that uh, can be quite handy. Well, uh, Nmap actually has a switch for that, uh, resolve all. That switch will use all the IP addresses being returned and run whatever scans you're specifying against all the IP addresses. This is not a very well-known switch, so something that you may find helpful. And yesterday I reported about the modifications made to the CTX uh, Python library and the PHP pass uh, PHP library. Well, today the malicious actor who made those changes came forward and stated that they actually uh, just uh, were conducting some research, as they called it. We had it happen before where researchers uh, did make modifications to open source projects like this. And commonly, well, it's not considered ethical. And of course, in this case, actual secrets were exfiltrated. The researcher claims that they did not save those secrets but of course we only got the word of a person who has issues with ethics in the first place so i would hope that you are resetting those secrets if you are affected and heroku did announce that uh, starting next week you'll be able uh, to re-enable the heroku to github integration following a uh, breach about a month or so ago Heroku disabled uh, this uh, integration they did an extensive security review they're saying and they're actually going to improve the integration in the future to use a more granular and better protected OAuth token now they're stating that uh, this new solution still is a little ways out uh, so you may wait for that or you may re-enable uh, the integration next week when it becomes available again. If you choose not to enable it, then you can also do just the git push Heroku in order uh, to keep your services up and running as they put it in their announcement. Well, and uh, Mozilla released an update for Firefox and Thunderbird earlier uh, this week. Uh, the implication of the update, which actually didn't really look all that remarkable at first, is that if you are using Firefox, there is a chance that a malicious website may observe uh, data that you're entering into websites after you may visit the malicious website. One particular product that's affected by this is Tails 5.0. Tails is the anonymous uh, Linux distribution. It integrates Tor and other tools, and in particular, of course, is concerned about keeping your data secure and avoiding some of these uh, cross-site issues that we have here due to this Firefox bug. As a result, uh, Tails is recommending that you stop using Tails 5.0. They are working on a new version, Tails 5.1, which should be released on May 31st. So you only have a couple days uh, to wait. And this only affects uh, the Tor browser, which is based on Firefox, does not affect other components like Thunderbird, which are also part of Tails. But well, it's not only Firefox that's vulnerable, also Google Chrome released an update. Uh, we are now at Chrome version 102. One of the vulnerabilities being addressed here is rated as critical. There are also a couple of vulnerabilities being addressed here that uh, were discovered at the Pwn to Own contest last weekend. As I mentioned at the contest, uh, any vulnerabilities being found will be reported to the vendor. So Google was here quite quick in coming up with patches for these vulnerabilities. Total of 32 security fixes in this release of Chrome. 
Well, and that's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.